Yellowstone supervolcano earthquakes. When quake swarms hit the park, and what that means, by Vicky Olfant of Express UK, having to do what uh, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory USGS explained. Yellowstone National Park hit by swarms of more than 200 quakes in two weeks. This is concerning uh, what happened last year and what's going on continually this year, especially northwest of the lake in Montana. And uh, there are fears of the big one coming or a volcanic eruption that could be imminent. And this is what we know so far about series of tremors and what that could mean for the area. As we know, the park is on sitting on top of one of the biggest supervolcanoes in the world, Yellowstone. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was only set up in 2001, and that happened after a BBC documentary concerning Yellowstone and its dangers, which came out in the year 2000, impacted the uh, US government so much that they set up, they gave an order for the uh, observatory, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, to be set up the year following, in 2001. So it's relatively new, and they still have a lot of work to do. For example, the hydrothermal system there has over 10,000 springs, geysers, fumaroles, mud pots, etc. And one has recently been found southwest of the lake. Uh, they'll be going out this month. They'll be starting their field trips. So whoever is visiting there and going there for vacation or weekend, don't be surprised to see the geologists doing their work on their field trips. Now, they will be going to the new thermal area that will be that has been discovered, and uh, they'll be coming back with news concerning that as soon as they can. Now, tremors began to hit the National Park last year, February 8, and they've basically been continuing. It ramped up uh, last year, February 15, when seismic activity magnitudes increased markedly, and uh, the largest earthquake in the swarm was a 2.9, but you have to realize that since then we've had the 5 magnitude that has been downgraded to 4.4 and we have not heard anything about that since. They have not touched that with a 10-foot pole, they have not mentioned that, they have not referred to that in their Caldera Chronicles whatsoever. And that to me is very surprising. Now, uh, swarming is frequent occurrence in Yellowstone National Park and reports indicate that the region is actually a hotbed of seismic activity. If you see one of the videos before this one, our friend from Seattle, uh, Ben Fiorulo, gave us the seismic audio of one of the quakes in uh, Yellowstone. And it's always, uh, it seems to be always rumbling. It's never quiet. Uh, the geologists claim that that's normal. But uh, there's also been deformation in the uh, caldera and a rise in the Norris Geyser Basin, Basin, where we have the Steamboat Geyser that has been the biggest, it's the biggest geyser in the world. Yellowstone, as we know, has over 60% of the world's total geysers are in Yellowstone. And the biggest being Steamboat. And uh, it's in Norris Geyser Basin, which is rising. Whereas the caldera is subsiding. Now, swarming is a frequent occurrence in Yellowstone. And reports say that this region is actually hotbed of seismic activity. As we know, it's on the hot spot. There's a magma plume right under it. And uh, everything that we know about the recent earthquakes, having to do with uh, what's going on, what's causing the Yellowstone earthquake swarm then? The earthquake swarm is a higher than average number of earthquakes striking an area over a relatively short period of time the same day or a couple of days or weeks. Swarms typically occur without a single main shock and they have two main causes. It's shifting at the major tectonic plates or movements of water, gas or magma under the Earth's surface. Water, gas or magma. Well, something is moving underneath and that's one of the three. 
As for Yellowstone, both these reasons could be behind the recent activity. As well as being situated on the Snake River Plain, Yellowstone's hotspot area, an area of tectonic activity, this area also has a huge amount of hot springs, deep mud pot pools, mud pots, fumaroles, areas that gather liquid and gas beneath the surface. Because of this, the small quakes are very frequent. They occur in Yellowstone, typically hit by 1,000 to 3,000 quakes every year, according to the National Park Service. Uh, the uh, University of Utah is responsible for uh, keeping uh, track and monitoring the earthquakes there. The biggest quake on record was magnitude 7.3 that hit the Hebgen Lake in 1959. And the geologists believe that all these swarms and quakes that we're having now, which are so frequent, are because the uh, supervolcano has been rattled so much, so strongly since that quake that happened about 40, 50 years ago. Can you imagine? Now, are the Yellowstone earthquakes about to cause the big one? That's the question. Although the quake swarms recorded higher than usual activity in Yellowstone, it's not a sign that a major earthquake is going to follow, according to Michael Poland, who is the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Poland told Life Science, this is what Yellowstone does, and this is what Yellowstone being Yellowstone does. It experiences swarms all the time. And he explained the region's seismic history can provide clues for why a swarm has occurred, adding that the area which is near Norris Geyser Basin is usually extra swarmy. And uh, not only that, but we've recently had uh, earthquakes not too, well, they're not too small, in the uh, old Faithful area. He says, this particular area especially is a hotbed of swarm seismicity, and it has been for quite a while. One of the potential explanations for why this area is so swarmy is that the whole crust in the area is still adjusting to the big earthquake, the 7.3 magnitude of 1959. Well, uh, will Yellowstone earthquakes also cause volcanic eruption? Uh, he says that uh, the past swarms that we had account for 50% of the seismic activity in the area, and so far no volcanic activity has occurred from any of these past events. Michael Poland also added that large earthquakes in an underappreciated risk is an underappreciated risk at Yellowstone, and if it were to blow, it could devastate, of course, the whole of the United States. He says people tend to focus on the possibility of a huge eruption, which is vanishingly small. You know, so whenever they're talking about eruptions, they mean huge eruptions. Whereas, um, you know, you could have a major earthquake, which is not good because a supervolcano is nothing like a regular volcano. A supervolcano has a huge caldera and a huge magma chamber with a huge roof on top and uh, a, an earthquake of a seven magnitude is uh, very bad because it can rupture the roof of the magma chamber and that's when uh, the inevitable happens. Um, his people tend to focus on the possibility of a huge eruption which is vanishingly small and he goes on to explain that a magnitude seven earthquake could happen comparatively more often he said, and he adds, when they do happen, they're going to shake the region pretty severely, so people should be prepared for that. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon 
most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.